This is Rhea. And this is Just the Who of Us, where we talk about a range of topics, including life events, current events, spirituality, entertainment, family relationships, as well as answering listener questions and more. So welcome back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be back with you. <laughs> um, so today we're going to talk about your most recent book. Yeah. So I'm telling look, you. I've got a new copy. And look what it says right on the front. Number one bestseller, yay! That's right. Very you exciting. Know, not that I didn't expect that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, one of the things I've learned, and and this also comes from one of my favorite books, The Four Agreements: Make No Assumptions. For me, it's make no assumptions, have no expectations. Mm, so, yeah. and you know, people when I, when I was in that dating mode after I got divorced and I'd gone through my life and changed myself up. You know, I'd go out on dates and my friend said, well, what do you expect from the date? And I say, nothing. They go, I don't understand. What does that mean? And well, I said, well, if I have high expectations, then I'll be disappointed. Ah. And if I have low expectations, I might be disappointed as well. Yeah. So why not go in with no expectations? And then this way, whatever happens, happens. Right. Right. Okay. So <laughs> it's funny that you say that. Um do you hear the fan? No, I don't hear okay. a fan. Okay. Unless it's somebody um, in the back going, <laughs> <laughs> We like those kind of fans. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, okay. So it's, I, I was having this conversation this morning and, and it's actually in relation to divorce, not, not so much the divorce itself, but there's been for me kind of a recent shift in a relationship. And for my current husband, this, sh the things that cause this shift have been present as him as an outsider obser observing for the last six years that we've lived together. But for me, because I try to keep expectations on this certain relationship, my expectations have like not been even relatively met, uh, yeah. It became very one-sided. Yeah. So, and I'm wondering, before you continue, how much of that is, did you communicate your expectations? I, probably not the way I should have, because... So there you I, go. You'll always right. be disappointed when you don't communicate right. your expectations. Yeah. And now, you know, six years into it, I'm I'm trying to start. So, you know... The reason that I didn't, right? There's really no reason to ever be like, well, I didn't communicate because. But the reason that I communicated in a way that I did because I've wanted to kind of respect this person's okay uh, stuff. I don't well, know. I get it. I, I understand. You know, I oh oh, you could turn that off. You oh, can turn that right off. So don't accept it. Just say no thanks. <laughs> I have to figure out how to get that to stop coming. <laughs> um, just, just throw them out, <laughs> remove them. <laughs> so I, th so this person has they, they have uh, some mental health stuff. You know, they have for a while uh, some PTSD. So you know, okay. long story short. So I try to be respectful of that person's sure. mental health by not putting a lot of expectations and right. just kind of this is what I do. I just take everything on sometimes. And then I'm like, well, you didn't blah, blah, blah. Well, you always just did it yourself. So my right. expectation. Why would I blah, 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 if you're doing blah, blah, blah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, luckily now I have a husband who I don't have to do that with. Right. Okay. And, and it, that was even an adjustment. Like, right. uh, like I don't have to do everything myself. Right. You're actually going to do what you say. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't hold on to that, man. <laughs> 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 so I have to tell you an interesting story about expectations myself. So uh -huh. tonight I'm speaking at a community event. It's like meet the author book club type of thing. Nice. Okay. And this came up about a month or so ago. My wife went to a book club that she goes to 
And the women mostly hated the book that they were reading. So somebody said, wouldn't it be great if we could have a book club where the author's there? So my wife said, we can do that. I can make that happen. So, you know, great for her. So they texted me. I'm like, yeah, man. And I was funny because I was at a different meeting that night about a friend who just wrote a book on ADHD, which is unbelievable. I need, I would like to read that book, please. Thank you. (laughs) Send me those links. It was a really, it was a great book. It was a great night. And we're texting back and forth. And she says, yeah, you're the next book club. I'm like, ha ha. She goes, no, I'm serious. So I'm like, okay, great. (laughs) So we came up with the date. We said everybody was free at the time. As we're getting closer, we, I live in a very close knit Jewish community. Mm -hmm. And there's always something coming up, an engagement, (laughs) a wedding, bar mitzvah. You never know. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Unfortunately, even deaths. You know, when someone passes away, that's it. That person is out of contact for a week. The person, the family in my community. So so Sarita, my wife says, you know, this one can come. She has a last minute engagement wedding room. I'm like, okay, I'm not worried. She goes, what do you mean? She goes, there might be three people there. I go, okay. She's like, what was that? I go, I have no expectations. Yeah. Who's ever there is there. We'll get my message. Whoever's not there, okay. There's nothing I can do. Even yeah. my kids. I'm like, guys, you coming? Maybe. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks so much for the support. I love you so much. <laughs> Wait till you call me and say, Dad, can you do this? I'm like, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> so yeah, there's always expectations. And you know, I, I think I even wrote it right about it in the book. Yeah. About yeah. expectations. And yeah. I tell a story. I, I made up story about a husband and a wife and the wife sees the garbage can and it's full. Yes. And the husband is, doesn't even notice that there's a garbage can even there or that it has anything in it. And she keeps walking by it and she's so upset that it's, it's, he's not taking it out and he doesn't even know she's thinking about it. Yeah. Right? And then something else comes up and she's brewing all day brewing, brewing, brewing all day. And then all of a sudden, she, there's something else comes up, a small minor thing. And she, they, she starts yelling at him and she goes, and you didn't even take out the garbage. He's like, what? Did you ask me about that? <laughs> what are you talking about? Didn't you see the garbage was full? He's like, I didn't even see the garbage, let alone that it was full. <laughs> so that's what happens when there's, and I understand in the last, when you were talking about that last relationship, there were other things coming in. But that's at the end of the day, and I'm calling you out here, Rhea, that's on you. You know, 100%. 100%. Right. You can't yeah. get upset at somebody who doesn't know that you, you that you have something in there in your mind. Now, yeah. you're being respectful of that person and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, it's up to you to make the difference, make the, yeah. make the, make the communication happen. Yeah, you know, it's one thing that I, I I mean, I read this book so fast. And so what I would do, I kind of made like a, like a little. I don't know, is that a good thing or a bad thing that you read it so fast? (laughs) It's it's a good thing in this, in this sense, because I made this book kind of like my relaxation technique. So I would go, I I would say, okay, I'm going to go tan today. I'm going to go lay out today by the pool, let my son swim and play, and I'm going to read. Because otherwise, if I don't schedule things like this, I, I don't do them. It's like, right. I go to sit down and it's, oh, wait, I need to do this, do this, you know. And so I made it a point to say, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go lay out and I'm going to read. And so I did this. Not only did it help me get a little more tan, it <laughs> helped me. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, thanks. <laughs> so, but it, it became this kind of relaxation relaxation technique for me right. so one one reason I chose to do it that way too is because I really wanted to read it and really take it in you know mm-hmm. this is a book that you can't just sit down and, and read it and your mind be other places um you can't just you know just like oh I'm gonna read a little bit here I read a, you know when I lay out obviously I time myself because I don't want to burn <laughs> so I would do I would do a couple of chapters I turn over you know kind of thing and 
one thing that I really liked about it was how you talk about your previous marriage, your divorce, and your current marriage. And it kind of resonates with me because I, I don't really talk a lot about my previous marriage. Uh, when we went through our separation and divorce, it was very messy on social media. And we went through a period where we got our stuff together and, you know, we called each other best friends and like all this and, oh, you know, and we, we currently, our, our friendship has ended. Um, I made that choice because you know, a few reasons, but it's just a healthy thing to do. Um, I'm sure. So, <clears throat> you know, I, like, I, I, I get it. I, I, and I, and I hope to get to a point to where we co-parent we're cordial and there's not that kind of cycle of negative feelings, you know, yeah. again, like, I totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you keep in the choir. <laughs> <laughs> but you know and and when I was so so like yeah like I, I resonated with a lot because I've been there I am remarried um you know I don't remember if you really talk about the relationship between your first wife and your second wife if if they're cordial I don't talk about it in the book at all okay I didn't yeah. think so I don't talk about it in the book at all uh, there's just no reason for me to. That's fair. Yeah. But I'd say on a scale of a one to 10, I'd say it's around a seven. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with my own work on myself to get right. where I am with my ex. Yeah. And and I and I, I don't know. I think I tell the story. I do tell the story in the book about tell yourself a new story. Yeah. Right. And how that made a big difference. Yes. Thank you, Genevieve Davis, for teaching me that. And I give her credit in the book and I give her credit yeah. as much as possible. And I'm very oh. fortunate that she wrote the foreword in my book. Right. Right there at the right on the front of the cover. She wrote the foreword. And I love reading her foreword because she's just a beautiful writer, number one. But yeah. number two, she got me. She understood me. And as a mentor, you want the person who's that that's mentoring you to to get you so right when she right. taught me this this uh technique it changed my life okay because i went from saying that my wife my ex-wife thinks i'm the devil incarnate that i am that that she's told my children all the worst things in the world blah 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 blah. whether she did or didn't it didn't matter to me because right, that's right. just the way i felt right. and when i and i had a very very uh, barely a relationship with my daughter, right? So Genevieve teaches me this technique about telling a new story. And it took me a little while to get it. And once I got it, it became a thing of where I say, she, my daughter is on the spectrum. She has her issues. And my wife had just brought her back into the house, my ex, after she had gone to some therapeutic, therapeutic residential schools in Utah and Atlanta, or, you know, Georgia. Uh, and then had just come back and their tension between them was very tight, it was mm -hmm. very high. So I finally started to tell myself a story. She's doing the best she can. Okay. You know, sh I should appreciate what she's going through and just those things. I didn't tell it to anybody, nobody. Right. Right. And this was the technique that Genevieve taught me. And she said, then just let magic happen. And I'm like, Oh, really? <laughs> and then the craziest thing happened. I was telling myself this for about a week, just to myself. I said, I'm going to call my daughter. I called my daughter. And in the past, I would, have a, I would call her. I would have, if I was lucky, a one-minute conversation with her. Oh. And there were usually one-word answers. This time I picked up the phone. We had a 15-minute conversation excited, engaged. And at the end of it, I said, you know, Claire, I'd love to come and see you. I'd love to come to Westchester. She, I lived in, in Brooklyn. I live in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. She lives in Westchester. It's about an hour away. Okay. I'd like to get back to starting to come to see you. She's like, yeah, okay. So I was like, I hung up the phone. I go, I can call this a one-off or I can believe in what Genevieve is teaching me. 
Yeah. And say that the magic is happening. Yeah. And I decided to do that. So I went and I was positive. We had a great time. And, you know, this went on every week, every couple of weeks, whatever we could fit in. And one time I walked in, this was at the three or four. And my ex says to me, you know, you go, you come back. And she just goes back into her bubble and she doesn't talk to me. And she she's great with you and then she's not good with me. And I said, oh, okay. We went out, my daughter and I, when I was coming home, I said, Claire, please do your best to not shut mommy out and whatever. As I was leaving, I told my wife, told my ex, Nadine, call me on my drive back. Wait until you have some privacy and call me. She called me and I said, I just want, just want to tell you, I understand that you have a difficult job with her. I want you to know I appreciate what you're doing and it's not going unseed. That's all I said, something to that effect. Yeah, yeah. And she said, thank you so much. And it was as if I had opened up the floodgates in a positive way. And for the next hour we talked and that broke down a huge, huge wall. Now, yeah. unfortunately, a few weeks later, COVID hit. So I couldn't see Claire as often as I wanted. I couldn't see her at all. Yeah. And she couldn't even go to her programs and the programs that she was doing was online. It was a difficult thing. And they were really having a difficult time. So in the summer, I reached out to her therapist. And I said, I'd like for Claire to come to New Jersey, to the shore where she grew up, really, and spend a week with me and Sarita and her kids. I have a room for her in the rental that we're taking. She goes, great idea. I said, can you, can you kosher it with my ex? She says, yeah. She calls. She says, yep, she's all good. So I call my ex. I tell this what I'm going to do. And I'm not, I said, I'm not even going to ask her. I'm just going to tell her I'm coming to pick her up. Oh. Did that. I came and she went, came. She ended up staying for two weeks. She resented it a bit. Okay. She resented it a bit, but she stayed and it was okay and whatever. Then I pushed yeah. it for two weeks. Yeah. You know, some of the things when you're on the spectrum, you got to be careful. Right. Yeah. So here we are. So then I take her back. So a few weeks later, I call her. I said, let's do it again in August. I tell my ex. She goes, I'll let you know. Now, here's the crazy thing. Two days later, she calls me back. She goes, I was in the middle of a Zoom with a, somebody, with a friend of mine that I was working on a business with. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I think I have to take this call. I take the call. She goes, come get her right now. Huh? If you don't, one of us will be dead. Oh, God. I turned, to, I turned to my friend, I go, I got to go. I hung up, I get in the car, and I drive from New Jersey to Westchester. It's about an hour and a half, at least. Pick her up. She stayed with me for seven months. Oh, wow. Wow. And having my family, Sarita's family around, and my kids as well on the, yeah. on the fringe, helped to move her along. Yeah. All of that started because I told myself a new story. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it's perspective is key. And that's what I, I, I try to tell myself in certain situations. It's one thing I- oh, oh, By the way, before I forget, uh -huh. I told you earlier before when we first started that I have to leave, you know, I wanted to start early because I need yeah. to leave early. Uh -huh. That's for my daughter, Claire. Oh. <laughs> she's with me in the summertime oh how how old is she now side note she'll she's... be 25 okay okay and i'm very proud of her in in yeah. january she started college oh okay and she got two a's and a b wow very proud That's of her. fabulous very proud of her yeah i'm proud of her <laughs> so she's come a long way she's yep. going a long way and i'm very proud of her growth yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to tell you the truth, you know, maybe I'm I'm patting myself on the back, my wife. It's in no short, no small to the, the influence that we've had on her. As a matter of fact, I saw my ex yeah. at an engagement party the other night and she said to me, I gotta tell you, she looks great, she sounds great. Uh, so yeah, she does. She goes, This is yes. what her ex, her husband said to me, You two both understand how you have to work with her and how you have to work with her, and it's working great. Yeah. <laughs> what can I ask for? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but you know what? But you do deserve that pat on the back because 
and I'm kind of, you know, uh, uh, it's and she did ninety nine percent of the work, but it's right really push for mothers. Right. Yeah, but it's right but way. you you stayed in her life and you stayed consistent, and that's huge, especially yeah. for a daughter and her father. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I imagine <laughs> that's huge. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's there's things that that we talked about today that it's 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 crazy, but it's not because I know how the universe works. Um, but are are such like there's conversations I had with my husband just this morning, and some of the things that we're talking about are like they fit right in line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I really have to say thank you so much for that the way you're reading the book, in the the process that you're reading the book because I yes. talk about it. I go, this yep. isn't a book that you just read and put to the side. Really, it's a book that you put on your nightstand. Yeah. You wake yep. up and you go, okay, what part of it do I want to focus on today? Yep. And, and that's where, <laughs> here I am, shameless plug, that's where the cards come in. Because you say, okay, if I don't have I was, time for Yes, I wanted to talk about cards. those too. <laughs> yeah, you better get the cards. What the heck? Come on. <laughs> no, I, I, no, 100%, because I started reading the book and, and you say that, you're like, hey, look, this is something that you're going to want to read and you're going to want to process it. You're going to want to focus on it. And I've read other books that I read and I'm just like, I read it like, you know, I do everything else kind of half here and half there. Right. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I was like, no, you know what? I'm not really going to go through this process unless I go through this process. I wanted right. to treat it kind of like a, like a therapy process, you know, like. Cool. Or a coaching process. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, and it's funny because just another kind of random, uh, thing kind of but when I started my first business I was in cool in school for psychology and I was like oh you know I got this little life life coaching certification let me start a life coaching business right hadn't had I hadn't had therapy since I was a kid and I had never had life coaching I'd never done it myself and it wasn't until you know I, I initially started it as a life coaching business because I wanted to turn it into a psychology practice not being a person in psychology, never having experienced life coaching. But, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm getting the education. So anyway, (laughs) I started (laughs) therapy and I've started connecting with life coaches and actually learning about things. And I was like, I'm actually glad that this didn't take off in the beginning because I would have known what the hell I was doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I say, I the coaching school started. I went to was a, almost a year long process before yeah. I got certification. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, it's, I'm glad that things have worked out the way they have and, and perspective, you know, because I could, I could have said like, I was a little bit, oh, this isn't going the way I wanted it to. Well, no. And I'm glad it did because I didn't know what I was doing. You right. know, like right. we go and, and it's really like anything. We go, we get this education, but it's not until we get the life experience portion of it. Or you can read books right. on parenting. It's not, you know, things until you experience them that you actually start to know what you're doing. And you don't right. know for a long time still. Yeah. <laughs> but- I remember. I remember when, when the kids were growing up and my wife was reading Dr. Spock. And she goes, Dr. Spock's an idiot. <laughs> it's obvious he's never had kids. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, that's one reason that I, I wrote the parenting book I wrote was because not only do I have like multiple forms of formal education in parenting ever since high school, I've also been a parent for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> a very long time. I'm like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> and I've made a lot of mistakes, so I can tell you what not to do. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh my God, I love you. I love you. Guys, you know, she really can say she's been a, a parent for a long time. She's a parent longer than she was a kid. That's for sure. <laughs> 100%. 100%. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I have to ask you a quick question. If if I asked you right now, think of one, I know you can't find the book because you just moved and all that, but if you could think of <laughs> one thing in the book that stuck out to you right now, what would it be? I think it, it I think that it was that you talked about the complete process. Um, you know, like I said, you talk about your first marriage, you talk about the divorce process, you talk about 
your anger, your emotions that you were just kind of out of control with and how how different that is now. Right. And and then you talk about your current marriage and that's that's it, yeah. If I had to pick one thing right now, it would be that. that you talk about the whole process and right. Thank you. you're very open on your anger, your aggression, and then how you reformed that with your perspective and your uh can't think of the word your passion to live incredibly full every day right and how you decided to do that yeah you know it's interesting because the last couple of weeks i really think god has been testing me by putting situations in front of me that in the past i would have lost it within two or three minutes and a couple of them I, I was able to record because they were on Zoom, All right? Oh. So I would send them to my COO, which is what I call her, because if I call her an assistant, she's so much more than that. Yeah. She's, and and I'm like, I, I, I need you to listen to this just to tell me that I did things right. And what we came back after one or two of them that she was able to listen, she's like, she says, you know what? We need to learn to, to be able to, to move quicker on our feet. She says, both of us. I said, here's the thing. When I'm not emotionally charged, I can move quickly on my feet. When I am emotionally charged, I could move more quickly on my feet, but the result would be disastrous. Yeah, yeah. And now that I understand my way of reacting, one was somebody who I was working in a program and that wasn't working out. And I was trying to tell the woman, I'm not going to continue. And she just didn't want to hear it. And she wanted yeah. more money. And all of a sudden, one day I get a thing. Oh, somebody wants to have a breakthrough to get coaching session. I'm like, all right, cool. I get on and I look and I go, you look familiar. It was her son. Mm. And he's like, yeah, you owe my mother money. And I want to talk to you about it. I go, listen, oh. I don't like to be ambushed. But I understand why you're doing it. You, you're looking out for your mom. But I don't like to be ambushed. And I'm open. I'm, if you had sent me a thing that you'd like to talk to, I'd talk to you. Yeah. Well, let's talk. Let's have a conversation. And he told me these things. He goes, Y'all don't know. You haven't given her any money. I go, That's not true. He said, I've given her this much money and there's a paper trail for it. He says, Well, you, you owe this much. I said, That's her opinion. She hasn't delivered on what I'm looking for her to deliver. It doesn't matter the detail. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. who it is. It doesn't matter the details. Yeah. But for me, I stayed within myself and didn't allow myself to just say, your mother promised this, that, that, or her, when I had the conversation with her the week before. I yeah. didn't do any of that because I knew it would just be serving my ego and serving that anger that I was feeling from being not getting what I thought I was going to get. He says, well, everybody thought that that was just an ancillary extra. I go, no, I didn't. I felt that that was the, the, the kicker that got me into the program. Yeah. So whatever it was, it doesn't matter. So I was so proud of myself for practicing what I preach basically and living what I tell people to do. And yeah. then being able to look back and say, check, check, check. Like if you take stop, think and respond. I stop, I yes. don't respond there. I got a 10. <laughs> you know? I scored a 10 on that. <laughs> you know, so yesterday and today, you know, I've had conversations with two different, had a conversation with my son yesterday. It was a very emotional conversation, but you know, I, the conversation started out by me telling him my expectations and him just kind of being like, okay, okay. Because my kids and my husband know that I'm very, not everything needs a response. Everything that comes to your brain sh doesn't have to come out of your mouth. And this is something that I tell my eight-year-old yeah, a lot I too. Think I cover that more than once in the book when I do the five <laughs> stages of an argument. <laughs> yep. 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 Stop. Think about it. Does it really need to come out of your mouth? What? Appropriate your response if it does or if it doesn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the, the conversation, so he's just, okay. Yes. Okay. And I said, Hey, you know, let's talk about this. I want to have a conversation about it. And we had a very emotional, open conversation. Okay. And, I, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, at the end, I said, 
thank you for having this conversation with me. Right. Because yeah, like had we not this converse, had this conversation, I would have had this perspective. You would have had this perspective. And there's no meeting in the middle. And, and we don't understand so much each other because we're not talking about it. Right. Right. One thing I appreciate about him is that that he's willing to have a conversation in the in the appropriate mindset and the appropriate setting. Thank it was you. just the two of us. There wasn't another kid coming and interrupting. There wasn't me with my ping pong brain having all this stuff going on. Right. You know, it it was, it, I appreciated it so much. And it, it stopped thinking and respond, you know. Right, right. And you know, you know what? <laughs> it's, it, that's the beauty of it. You can, if you look at it, you can say, you know what? It's about awareness. If now that I'm aware of these things, like stop thinking yes. and respond or build your emotional strength or whatever it is. Yeah. It's then, am I going to be, people think, oh, I'm aware means I'm self-aware. Not necessarily. Right. You right. could be self-conscious and people are like, oh, there's not really a difference. Go, there's a huge difference between the two, right? But being aware is the first step because every time you now go into one of those things, you could say, do I want to have a conversation or a confrontation? Yes. And you yes. decided to have a conversation and it might've gotten heated but yeah. it was for good reason. It wasn't a confrontation heated. It wasn't as if saying, you're a piece of shit. You're saying right. what right. you're doing doesn't align. 100%. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's about, <clears throat> it's about future plans and life goals. And, you know, my son is 23. There's certain expectations I have for his life. And, and one of the things that we talked about was that and he says, okay, why? why is this what your expectation for my life is? And I said, well, as your mom, so-and-so, he says, wait, he said, take your mom hat off outside of being my mom. Why is this your expectation? And I was like, that's kind of difficult for me. Like my husband said something recently, you know, you can be a person without kids <laughs> like you can right. be a person without parenting right 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 it's so hard but you can <laughs> i'm like but i don't but like how <laughs> my mom hat is always on no yeah. matter what other hat i'm wearing yeah, you know yeah yeah whether i'm responding appropriately or whatever i'm doing like right. i go back when i make mistakes i go back and say well shit how could i how can i change this because realistically there's somebody always watching me when i right. yell and I get mad at people because they can't drive. There's somebody in the car with me, typically. <laughs> right. No, I know that feeling. And, you know, I, for me, what I hear him oh, say. Oh, you're living in New York, saying, and I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. But what I hear him saying, <laughs> and this is my interpretation of what he's saying when he says, take your mom hat off. Yeah. Is get emotionally detached from the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a logical conversation without allowing your emotions to control what you think I should be doing with my life. Yeah. If you can have that and say, okay, I'm your mom. I get that. And you want me to put my hat off. I'll do my best by trying to couch my emotions. Now let me hear what you have to say and let's see if I can get through it and allow me to process it. And that's where the responding comes in. You may have to be able to answer right there and it's okay to say, Okay, I heard it. Now I have to process it. You know, it was funny because the next day after that first conversation with the woman when she was trying to convince me to continue and to pay more and all this stuff, and she was doing a great job. And I was keeping myself out of it. And I spoke to Heather and I told her what I was feeling about it. That's the COO. I slept on it. The next day I wrote, I woke up and earlier than I usually wake up, not much earlier. Mm -hmm. And I wrote all the things I was thinking about that if I have a conversation with her again, or if something else, these were the things I was feeling, but I couldn't get them out because they would have come out the wrong way. Right, right. Me, it was justifying. It was allowing me to say, I'm advocating for myself right here instead of defending myself. Right. It's a huge difference between advocating and defending. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. So it's the yeah. same thing here. Imagine if you could say to him, okay, son, I hear everything you're saying. Let me take it in. I do my best thinking in my sleep. Mm -hmm. I wake up and I'm like, wow, this is a great idea for the thing I was thinking about yesterday when I was getting upset. 
So yeah. I, I've I've really been trying lately to shift my perspective, like make that focus of things, shift my perspective. Because I, I I do still sometimes I still am emotionally unregulated. It's been something that I've been working on for a long time. I'm a lot better than it used to be. But in the moment, I still have those times where I'm just like, eh, you know, and then I go back. I always try to make sure that I go back and have conversations with people, though, because I want my kids to understand we make mistakes, but we have to communicate and we have to, right. I, I communicate. I literally gave a lecture to the manager of a fast food restaurant on communication recently. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are over there laughing. Next time, go to the manager and say, here, read this book. (laughs) My kids are laughing. They were like, one of my daughters was like, I thought she was talking one of us for a minute because she's over there lecturing about communication. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like, what are we doing here? Ma'am, had you acknowledged people, you would have known so-and-so. I waited 30 minutes to say that. So you're, you should feel lucky. But anyway. (laughs) <laughs> but you know but even like that I try to even when I'm in the moment I try to okay don't okay what should I be saying to really get out what I'm trying to say instead of just spurts of anger and yeah. and so it, it's one thing that in the book that I really respected the fact that you talked about your experience with that because I can relate to that and I think a yeah. lot of people can especially when it comes to changes in relationships marriages you know dating whatever i think that a lot parenting with parenting kids, with kids friends family yeah, yeah. they involved they're always a, 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 a i don't mean this in a negative way but they're always a moving target they're always yeah. changing they're always developing some yeah. are evolving and some are devolving yes and you got to be ready for that there are people that are in my life now that weren't in my life five or six years ago and there were people that were in my life 10 years ago that are cold, nowhere near in my life. Yes, yes, yep. And I'm okay with both of them. 100%, 100%, yeah. And then there are those who you don't see for a long time, but when you get together, it's as if you were with them 10 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's good. Yeah, I used to think that you had to talk to somebody all the time, every day, all day, for them to really be a friend. And then I grew up. Um, <laughs> I, I had. How many friends. best friends did you have when you were a girl? <laughs> no, I gave my husband this this kind of like I don't know if you want to call it lecture, but it was a long time ago. He called everybody his friend, and I was like, "Hey, you know, like, not everybody's your friend." <laughs> In my opinion, this is what a friend is. This is what an associate is. I have a lot right. of associates, but I have a few friends, you right. know, right. Right. like, and he was like, oh, when you put it that way, I guess I, I yeah. make that make yeah. sense. I'm my like, friend circle is friend? very small. <laughs> my friend circle is very small. My acquaintance Same. circle yeah. is very big. Yes. And those acquaintances, I have very good relationships with them. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean I don't like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you can be an acquaintance and, and it's a positive, healthy thing. Right. It, it, you don't, you know, it, it doesn't mean that because you call someone your acquaintance and not your friend or your best friend that, you're that not they're less important. important. They're not less important. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's perspective too. That's another yeah. perspective. Um, I try to teach my kids that too. And, and, my daughter one reason because my oldest daughter she went through a period where everybody was her friend and then as people you know it's like middle school people start changing and she's like hurt by it oh I thought they were my friend my friend and I was like well honey you guys are really just associate these people don't really have any obligation to you right. you know like was, yeah. and and she started un- learning and understand that and so when things happened you know people started changing as we naturally do she was able to accept it more and it wasn't as personal to her. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I went through this with my daughter. We yeah. didn't know, we didn't, she wasn't diagnosed. Right. Until after the divorce. Until, and so she was 13, 14 years old when we started to see some of these things and get a better handle on them and understand yeah. them. And eventually we were able to, you know, put her in the right environments to help her understand and learn these things and go through it. It was tough sending her to Utah. It was tough. 
but you know it was it was necessary at the time yeah and she started to unpack the things that she realized weren't friends like she'd say oh yeah my friends love when i get up and sing on the bus no they don't they're looking to make fun of you yeah oh you can't tell that to a child yeah yeah you know but now she sees it she's getting better with that she's made some acquaintances in college so far she's today the reason i'm taking her you know uh, i was saying i'm taking her to the train she's going to the city to meet one of her friends from westchester they're going to go to the city and spend the day and then she contacted her brother and brother-in-law and said can one of you bring me back to jersey at the end of the day and they're like yeah we could do that so she put her plan together came to me said dad could you take me to make this train i said yes just yeah. I'm glad you gave me enough time so that I could schedule myself that way. And she goes, yeah. I have a schedule for what I'm going to do today. We're going here, but she loves anime. We're going to go to ramen store. We're going to do this. If she could, she'd be Asian. <laughs> if she had a choice. <laughs> <laughs> she'd be Korean. <laughs> but I say that with all the love <laughs> in the world, you know? But, so, but I'm so proud of her. Yeah. For being out her day, going and doing it and spending Yeah, that's, that's big, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, she's high, high functioning. Okay. High, high functioning. So she. Well, she that's why we didn't see it until she was. <laughs> <laughs> and she's very, very smart. Very smart. You know, I, I, I don't have a ton of experience with autism. Um, I, I've seen it on different levels, though. Um, my cousin, she has a daughter. She, she has two daughters. They're on the spectrum. One is they're kind of complete opposite ends um and you know one you you couldn't tell so to say you know visually um mm -hmm. the other one certain social anxieties and cues right. and you know different things like that that you can tell um right. but they're both very intelligent in, in their own ways and right when I was younger I met uh, a kid he lived next door to my mom I don't, I feel like this, I have like a Nintendo or something. It didn't work. Something was wrong with it. This kid, he's like, give it to me. I'm like, okay. Give, he takes it <laughs> completely fixed. Like I go over there to his room and he's just in the floor, just working away. And he's like, go away. Right. Okay. I left. Right, 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 right. He bring, fixed it, completely fixed it. Like, yeah. kid. I'm like, what? Yeah. And you and, know and, what? I I found that there's no such thing as a textbook. Right. 100%. 100%. 100 Each one has their own specific idiosyncrasies, things yeah. that work for them. For her, she's socially awkward. She has issues with her, with her, um, with her uh, hygiene and stuff like that. Look, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, me and her sister finally convinced her she's got one of these crazy, kinky hair things. Yeah. And she doesn't take care of it. When I convinced her to go to a woman and yep. get her hair done and do the keratin and do the whole thing and yeah. spend a lot of money. Right. And I came and the woman, I told her, please tell her what she should be doing with her hair now. You have to wash it two, three times a week. I said, because it's coming for me, it means nothing. So I was like, okay, Claire, you want me to do it again? I get that. You got to make sure you're taking care of it because in three months, you got to do this again. Oh, okay. You know, every three months because your hair grows. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. so she's like okay and she, so far she's been great and she looks like a different person yeah so you hope that that gets into her mindset and saying yes I look good i could feel good and if i could feel good i could feel good around others and so on and so forth yeah yeah i have i have one that i i kind of have to have that conversation with sometimes and i'm i've try to kind of figure out how to approach it right like do I say hey so I'll just kind of be like hey you know <laughs> um give her the yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> hey, it's a tough it's, hey, it's so hey, hard you, uh... it's so hard because it, 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 this is why I gotta be honest with you this is where coaching and even therapy comes in 100 percent. yeah because someone not anybody this is anybody if you if you're a parent and you tell your children, they think the children think you're judging them. Yes. If there's yes. an emotional charge there. Yeah. But if a coach says it to them, 
right? An outsider who's objective, who's supportive, who's non-judgmental, that same message gets through. That's true. And it's but not just that children, it's for everybody. Yeah, well, yes, yes. You know, I was it. telling somebody a story recently. <laughs> One of my sisters is a rock star in my community. She has come up with things and her latest thing, which she's been doing for the last six, seven years is she built a cancer center for people, she, not, no medical things done there, but she gets them into the doctors she needs to see. She gives them the support they need. She gives the family the support, all these things. She's unbelievable. She's a rock star. She's building a multi-million dollar building to house this. And she's gone out and raised the money to do it. She's unbelievable. When I told her I was going to be a life coach, she goes, you're going to be a life coach. Ah. <laughs> wow it's your family it's the emotional charge of it <laughs> yeah 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 no I, th I think about that sometimes too like I'm I'm I still yell sometimes <laughs> like Why? I'm gonna sit here and tell people how to handle their parenting and their relationships <laughs> right, recently Sarita heard me yelling and she turned to somebody and she goes I think that might be the second time in our seven years of knowing each other that I heard him yell. Really? And the crazy thing is when we were dating, we had, like I said, we're from a small community. So we had overlapping family members, cousins, nephews, things, whatever. And somebody told her, be careful with him. He's got a very short temper. I remember that from the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wrote that in the book. I don't remember. I, I, <laughs> I remember you talking about... I, Right. And Unless it's just like, well, I've never seen it. <laughs> she told him I've never seen it. <laughs> Which or, is fine. You know what? Yeah. Somebody was looking out for it. It was from caring that they said it. It was then for her to decide, what am I doing with this information? Yeah. Yeah. I, it may not have been that specific story, but I, I, I remember you talking about it because it's one of the things that I was like, oh, like, I'm glad you put that out there, you know, that to kind of showcase. The I did have a short make. temper. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, but it's honest though. And, and when I get in the car, I do have a short temper. <laughs> so funny. I was talking to this, to this guy, Josh, who works with Heather, it's Heather's brother. And he's talking about me doing videos. He goes, maybe do a video about road rage. I go, yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> no, that's, that's the one thing I will never coach anyone on because no, no, unless I overcome it. I, and thanks to my friend, David Sitt, who wrote the book, I ADHD react. Refocused. That's the book, ADHD Refocused by David Sitt, Dr. David Sitt. Okay. I understand that those tendencies that I have when I'm driving is part of my ADHD. Oh, I never thought about that. Right. He went through it and he's like, if you do this, you're ADHD. I'm like, check, 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 check. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I already knew it. You know, I, I, I had spoken to someone uh, about 10 years ago to find a doctor. And after 10 minutes, he goes, yep, you're ADHD. <laughs> yeah. But I wish I knew it when I was 15 instead of when right. I was 50. But, you know. <laughs> You know, that that's one fun thing about doing this podcast is that I do get to talk to other people who have experienced things that either I haven't or that I haven't completely understood yet, you know, right. and, and it, it's beneficial for me, but it's also beneficial, beneficial for the person I'm talking to, because you get to, you get to talk about it. You also get to explain it. It kind of helped me to like, oh, yeah, like yeah, get to this yeah. aha place. Like, yeah. You know, and as a result, I look back and we talked about expectations. I lived to the expectations that my parents had, from, had said about me. I was lazy and immature. Oh my gosh. So, wow. So if, if that's what people think, then, okay, I'll be lazy and immature. But really, I was ADHD. That wasn't a diagnosed and, you know, just whatever. You know, I had a point. I completely lost it. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, all right. No. We're, we've been rambling for almost an hour now. <laughs> No, you know, but this conversation couldn't have happened in a more perfect day and time because that's the universe. That's the law of attraction. That's yep. magic. That's the yep. cycle of A's. It's all what you want to talk about. It's what comes up is there for a reason.
Yeah. It's like when someone tells me I'm on a podcast and someone says, pull out a card. I tell them, no, tell me what card, give me a number. And they go, oh my God, that's really what I need. That they're like, they're kind of like tarot cards. I go, okay, if you want to think that, but <laughs> they're not, but okay. <laughs> but I get, I mean, I get the, I get the comparison. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I totally get it. But I'm like, oh my God, that's what I needed to hear today. Okay, yeah. Good. That's yeah. why I had you pick out the number because you right. need to hear that. <laughs> I don't okay, know what tell- you need to hear. The universe knows. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the cards really quickly, and then right. you've probably got to wrap up, right? All right. So the best way to find out about my cards, my book, getting a coaching session with me is just go to very simple connectwithmartin.com. How, how can I make it any simpler? Right. <laughs> so yesterday was on a podcast. They go, you know, how do you, how do I connect with you? I said, well, how about if I just tell you connectwithmartin.com? They're like, Wow. So you can get the cards there. You can get the book there. <laughs> the one-stop shop. Yeah. And As always, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, we got to keep doing this. We love, we, this is number I three. Know. I know. I know. Well, thank you for being here and can't wait to have you back. I'm looking forward to it. Visit www.philology.net. That's F-A-L-O-L-R-T-Y. Thank you.